I never ever met a miner who wanted his son to work down the pit. It was a terrible, terrible job, and they knew that. I wrote this book because I was in a South Wales mining community, and I thought to myself, why did this town come to exist? because, of course, there's none of the evidence anymore. And it's certainly the case with coal, which was filthy and dirty, and people wanted to forget as soon as they could that it was just shut out of history. If you go to Gwyr, I think that the on a snuggety way to go to Gwyr, and I think that it was very good to go to Gwyr. I Dan yr ewl fyna, rwy'n ti ddim yn gwybod, dim byd, mae bryn am man wedyn tair gwaith. Yn tair gwaith oedd fy is pit y ti, stia, mardi. Lawr fyny'n yn y cwm oedd uh, y rhythm, wedyn gallu caedrym, a wedyn ti'n mlawr at rhyn am man, a mae ffwrdd nymbo 1, nymbo 2, gallu fi ymlaen am lan. Mae gwybodaeth ar gael sy'n dangos bod dros ugen o pwllau glo yn yr ardal hyn. Yn, yn y patch bach fan hyn, ugen pwll, mae'n anodd credu ydyw e, tywyr. There is another side to the story of coal. There is the story of empire. Yes. And you almost can't separate one from the other. You can't. I mean, Welsh coal built the British Empire. Welsh coal anthracite was the best coal in Britain. No ifs, no buts. Thousands and thousands and thousands of people lived their lives and owed their lives to coal and to the ghastly proprietors. They'd run the risk of losing their lives. And the Marquis of Butte took a royalty on every handful of coal that came out of the ground. Er no problem, of course, pwy oedd yn ei mas o'r. Ond beth oedd ddim yn gadael Cymru, of course, oedd y cyrff oedd y diwoddau or the young glory in and a moment in the town of Bobol, see the deal there at all cost, a weird cost or kind of glow. There's an interesting legacy to all this in terms of the fact that people today may feel uneasy with the idea that, that Wales helped build the empire in any number of ways. And yet, coal also built cities, built communities. Yes, without coal, Cardiff would be nothing, absolutely nothing. The first million pound check in the world was written in Cardiff. Of course, it was a filthy commodity that made it. But without it, these places wouldn't exist. Glad the glow and over in Drake Lowry, your docks and barry, a gardiers, and never the vod, a radal not vid, and cost a poppet and deal in it. In the velvet lagoth, a radal in a gid, and by a dodent club, there didn't be the nivel in. The month and very far. You touch in the book on the sadnesses, the controversies. One of the first you touch upon is 1910, Tonopandi and Winston Churchill. Churchill didn't do anything bad in that uh, dispute. The following year, you can accuse him of doing something bad in the, in the Clanethley uh, dispute. But you can't accuse him of doing anything bad in that one. And so I think he's been unfairly accused. It was said very recently, actually, even while I was down there, don't you go mentioning Churchill down here. Oh, Christ. <laughs> Churchill. Dim Pagalo. Uh, resist, um, warmonger, uh, Turkrit. Rent the blue in Wedding in your tennis sleep because I personally see the strike rail fair, but the Nizam and Edith do wife, um, Churchill, although whatever the Arwine to Ravel on the Bobble Arras of the Nether and Blood Nagavia. If you tell the story of coal and whales, you're talking of disasters. Yes. Twice in St. Henneth, which was the starting point of, of your journey. Yes. Whole families and the extended family were really badly affected. It wasn't just in South Wales. It was the same was true up in the Northeast, for example, or in Yorkshire. But in Wales, there was something about the tightness of the community. The other disaster which you 
talk about at length happened in 1966. Oh, yes, Aberfan. Over 100 children were killed when a slag heap rolled down the side of a mountain and crushed a school. There's nothing worse, really, than being a parent and seeing your child go before you. I cried when I was there. One of the things which you say at the beginning of the book, which, you know, in terms of taking issue with something, I, I wasn't sure about it, was you wrote, soon the dead children will be forgotten. And I wondered why you think that. Well, people will forget Abu Van, I'm afraid, in the way that they forgot previous Welsh mining disasters. There was one, in, for example, in 1934 at Gresford. That is almost completely forgotten now. People now go to a garden centre, which is on top of where men were in, died entombed beneath them. The bodies are still down there. I just think we ought to have more respect for these people. The school, this is where the quiz and have a van, our horse plant, Naguna, many men, nor Mazel, Ruin was where the boards and the are. If in credit, or come with heavy, Sindros, they come with Snebam, many, and of your Abavan. Bis, bis, I'm incredible, I was a trachina, na na yino, a host of plant to the. As a plant, I didn't really need a grown them and grease on them. No, 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 The other thing that you write very evocatively about is the miner strike of 1984. Yeah. Your description of Scargill is of a, a weasley looking chap. Well, you can't deny that Arthur Scargill looks like a weasel. He does look like a weasel. And, you know, I tell you this, my, I thought at the time when I was sent out to cover the miners' strike at the time, I thought, these miners, they're brave, fierce men, and they deserve somebody better than this barrack room lawyer finger jabbing all the time. Arthur Scargill, I'm the man who invented the flying picket, he cried. I mean, he was a horrible man. And they deserve better than that. When you give no goal or scar gill at the cre, on Vella Thurman, when I get another in Lauer, I'm so weird as ever now, but they mean poor Semigai nonsense never, and in good board, other than any loss in here, because the linear Nessie with the Tamaho Groco there. I never ever met a miner who wanted his son to work down the pit. It was a terrible, terrible job, and they knew that. But the, the, the way that people looked after each other, the, peop the way that people cared, they had their pride. And that was the cruelest thing about that strike, I think. I mean, I stayed three now, I've been on a boat. I've been dally with it, I'll call the area. Marine Pace, what you want, don't go to the plant, I blame them, Dodo. Uh, uh, Pam Tim Tum Law, more grieve on Dan, because nobody said he needed a clay, nobody said, no Pam had pentrain, no. That's what. So Marine who bought Blim and Dodo, to what that's our nest is. Our nest, our darling, well, dear company, then you great, you glow. I mean, boys say, well, Pobble and Covio, 